Let us continue Lost Belt 6 voice acting with Section 5, Sheffield. There it is, Anise. That's Sheffield, the biggest hub city in all of Northern Britain. What an incredible citadel. Is that a castle up there on the hill? That's right. It's the only place with ramparts like that apart from Camelot. Did you know there's something special about Fairy Britain's ramparts? They're also bounded fields. The fairies that build them take a lot of time making sure they come out just right. Basically, nobody can get past these walls except through the gate. If the gate's open, you're free to pass. If it's closed, nothing's getting through. Those are the rules the kind, these kinds of magic walls are built with. Plumbing and windows aside, as long as you can keep the gate protected, everything inside will be safe. They say Bogart's the one who had all of this built, including the castle. Bogart? Is that the Lord of Sheffield? Sure is. He's also known as Bogart the Braggart and Bogart the Loveless. He didn't just lose the battle to decide who would lead the Fang Clan. He's also so unruly he got kicked out of Norwich. So he was once in the running to lead the Fang Clan. He must be quite the fairy then. Braggart speaks for itself, but why is he also known as Loveless? Because he swore off marrying for love, and now only takes human women as wives. Every fairy he married in the past all hated his guts. The only reason he lost his mana battle with Woodwows and his money game with Spriggan is because his wives betrayed him. When they were done with him, he didn't have any place left to go. Ever since, he's only taken human women as wives. Says that at least slaves will never betray him. So that's why he's called Bogart the Loveless. If you ask me though, I think he still wants love. He just doesn't trust it anymore. I see. It sounds like he's been through a lot. But that just makes the fact that he still managed to build an amazing castle even more impressive. You really have a thing for castles, eh, Anis? Maybe you really are from the upper class world then. Is anything coming back to you yet? It'd be great if you can at least tell us where you're from. No, I still can't remember anything from before you all saved me. But I do get the feeling I had something very important I needed to accomplish. Well, of course you do. You're the child of prophecy. You're the Tamlin who's going to keep us all safe. The one who's going to save all of Britain. I hope you're right. I've seen so many different sides of Britain on the way here. I know it's been less than 10 days since we started traveling together, but I've seen enough to know that it's a beautiful, beautiful country. If this power I possess really is meant to keep this country safe, nothing would make me happier. Hey, Wog, Rob, we're gonna have to go through the checkpoint soon. This is our last chance to let her go. I say we call a go-between and get this over with. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's probably not a good idea to go into Sheffield right now. But then again, we've also come this far. It wouldn't hurt to stick together a little bit more, right? Eh? Aren't we going to introduce Anis to Bogart, Rob? Then of course we got to get to the castle. Ah, <sighs> fine. Just do what you want. We only started being merchants because we couldn't cut it as thieves. This kind of merch was always going to be too rich for our blood. And so, the fairy's cart stopped in Sheffield. At this point, Gouda was still sleeping in the Nameless Woods. And Da Vinci had just become acquainted with Mike, the pub owner in Salisbury. And so, this other child of prophecy made her way into Sheffield. None the wiser that they were in the midst of a rebellion against High Queen Morgan. That little girl is the child of prophecy. 
Y yes, Mr. Bogart, sir. We're sure of it. She's got iron armor, an iron shield, a dangerous looking iron pipe, and she's strong enough to smash boulders. Please don't ask us where she came from. That's her secret to keep. But we're positive Anise here is the child of prophecy who's gonna save Britain. So we're hoping you'll treat her well and appraise her accordingly. Idiots. Do you really think you could pull one over on me? That girl is no fairy. She's a human. Eh? Anise is a human? Oh, <laughs> you're joking, right? Right? She's got just as much magical energy as a fairy. Besides, no human could possibly be that strong. Not necessarily. It's very rare, but there are some humans who are also fearsome warriors. That girl there does smell like a fairy, but she also has just a whiff of human about her. You must think I'm a fool if you really believed you could pawn such defective merchandise off on me. Here in my city of Sheffield, liars are no better than criminals, and fraud is a crime punishable by death. Guards! Arrest those merchants and have them hanged. You can throw the girl in a prison cell. Yes, sir! <laughs> Save us at ease! Ah! I'm sorry, but please stand down. Also, Rob and Mog are not liars. I can't remember anything right now, so I don't know if I really am the child of prophecy or not. But if they believe I am, then that's what I'm going to be for them. So if you're going to treat them like criminals, I insist you treat me like one too. Anise. <sighs> How is this girl so strong? Uh, get the Fang soldiers over here. She's too much for us alone. Whatever you do, keep Lord Bogart safe. Hold it. No need for that. This girl means us no harm. It seems you weren't pulling a fast one after all. Very well, I'll hear you out. Go ahead and give the merchants their payment. Now what is your name, brave girl? Oh, um... Robin Wog call me Anise. It's a lovely name. Anise? Oh, for... Do you generally make the habit of eating children? No? Then forget about going by Anis. You there. Are there any guards who can still move? Y yes, sir. The others are still numb from that earlier attack, but I think I'm more or less recovered. Take this girl to Habitrot's tailoring workshop. Then once she's ready, take her to the royal chambers. I've never seen a woman like this one before. While I'd rather she had more meat on her bones, that attack of hers was a sight to behold. Today is your lucky day, girl. You will be my partner tonight. Once you've cleansed yourself, you're to await for my arrival this evening. My 62nd bride. Eh? Hey, you're taking Anise as a bride? And so she came to the fairy who would serve as her final bastion. The workshop of Habitrot, the ever cheerful fairy beloved by everyone in Sheffield. Habignan! Habignan! Please don't be mad. I know you've already got a lot on your plate, but Lord Bogart has a new job for you. And you think pussyfooting around will make me say yes? I already told you not to bring me any more work. I didn't come here to stitch together armor and spears and bags. I came here to sew dresses, damn it! Do you have any idea who I am? I'm Lady Goddamn Habitrot, the greatest dressmaker in all of Britain! E excuse me? Bogart said I was supposed to get changed here. Right, right! Abignan, 
Did you finally lose it? I mean, you've always been kind of a mess, but... Alright! Finally a job worth doing! At last, my waiting is paid off! Don't tell me. Bogart wants to make this girl an outfit, right? I'll have it done in less than no time. I mean, just look at how cute she is! That settles it! I'm making her my bride! Pride? Does that mean I'm going to be marrying her and Bogart? Uh, don't pay her any attention. This fairy's always been a little off. She just showed up not too long ago after we started looking for a fairy who could make bridal dresses. She's definitely good at her job, but she's also pretty... Well... Weird? Old-fashioned? Unflappable? I'm still not sure she fully understands that we're rebelling against Morgan here. Still, she is good at her job. She's always claiming she's a friend to all brides or something like that. That's me. I'm Habitron the Spinner, professional seamster. This fairy is all about helping blushing brides before their big day. But never mind that. I'm all set to get started, so let's take your measurements. Hey, I wasn't talking to you. Go on, get out of here. Give us some privacy. And tell Bogart he'll have to wait another day. He always thinks these things take way less time than they do. G got it. How about some milk? Should I bring it by later? Of course! I deserve a reward for all my hard work after all. And don't forget to heat it up. Hey there, young miss. It's okay. You don't have to be scared. This is all happening so fast you must be totally bewildered, huh? Well, don't worry. I'm on your side. After all, I'm Habitrot. Friend of brides with bright futures ahead of them anywhere. No more stuffy iron armor for you. I'm gonna make you the best dress ever. Th thank you, Habinyan. I'm Anise. Oh, right. Uh, Bogart said I'm not supposed to use that name anymore. Is Anise the name of someone special to him? Anise, eh? Yeah, that's definitely not a good name for you. There used to be a scary fairy called Black Anise who went around abducting and eating children. You don't need a name like that. Hmm, let's see. Pardon me. Aha! I knew it! I'm gonna call you M.A.S.H. You alright with that? Okay, I hate to say goodbye to Anise, but M.A.S.H. sounds fine too. But why did you pick M.A.S.H.? Because it's written on your, se your shield. See, it's right here on the inside, in chalk. Oh wow, you're right! And in such big letters, too! I can't believe I never noticed before! So you're responsible enough to write your name on your things, but then you forgot your own name? <laughs> That's hilarious! And so, she regained her true name, but only in the most superficial sense. It would still take some time before she returned to being M.A.S.H. in both name and soul. Okay, now that your measurements are all done, it's time to get to work. Oh, do you have any preferences when it comes to color and stuff? I know your armor's mostly black, but I bet you'd look great in white. Habitrop began happily cutting away with her scissors. And the next day, the best time of Habitrot's life came to an end. There, all done. You can open your eyes now, Mash. Go on, take a look in the mirror. Th 
this is wonderful, Habanyan. I love it. It's easy to move in and warm, and so very soft. It almost feels like I'm wrapped in stars. I can't believe I'm getting such a lovely outfit so soon after I got here. I must be the luckiest bride in the world. Morning, Mash. That's great. I'm so glad to hear that. And now, our story begins in earnest. For the time being, the girl was no longer a shield-bearer, but a lady, the envy of everyone. Thus began her days of splendor and delight, easily one of the few and most peaceful times in all of Fairy Britain. At least, for the short time it lasted before Sheffield Castle was razed to the ground. From the moment the first rays of morning light lit the sky, Sheffield's castle town was abuzz with excitement. Overnight, rumors of the Lord's new lady, the knight in iron armor, had spread in a flash. They said she was more than a match for both the black dogs and the moor, and that she was even stronger than Bogart himself. More on that later. Did you hear about our new lady yet? They say she even sent Lord Bogart flying, and he withstood a blow from Gawain. Isn't that amazing? The merchants who brought her here say she's the child of prophecy. If that's true, we might actually be able to go back to Norwich. Oh yeah, I got a peek of her in the castle yesterday. She's definitely the real child of prophecy. You can tell she's no ordinary fairy. There's just something different about her. I thought my heart was going to melt when she smiled at me. She might even be as much of a beauty as Lancelot. <laughs> you hear that, Wog and Winky? The whole town's talking about a niece. I mean, Mash. And Bogart paid us a boatload of cash for her. We'll be all set for winter this year. Too bad we can't see Mash anymore, though. I didn't think she was going to live in the castle. I thought we'd all be together forever. D don't be stupid, stupid. We just gotta be patient. Bogart's bound to get bored of her eventually, and when he does, we take her to Edinburgh. You just know Nocnaria up north would pay even more for the Child of Prophecy. Oh, come on. Not you too, Rob. Wog, I can understand, but you? Mash is just merchandise. Now that we've sold her, that's it. We're done. There's nothing tying us together anymore. I say we leave Sheffield before it's too late. The longer we stay, the harder it'll be to make our escape. Escape? Why do we gotta escape, Winky? We got money now, right? Are we gonna stay here till spring? Yeah, Mash protected us. Nobody's ever protected strays like me and Wog before. So we're gonna stay here until we return the favor. But if you want to go, Winky, you can go. You're not like us strays who drifted here. You're actually from the land of the Fae, and you're way smarter than us. You'll be fine on your own no matter where you go. You're giving me way too much credit. The more clever some twisted bastard thinks they are, the less capable they are of changing what they believe. Just so we're clear, I do not believe you are actually the child of prophecy. The only reason I'm letting the townspeople believe different is that it suits me. And let me be clear about one more thing. You have no right to voice your opinion here. I'll need, it'll, I'll need more than power if I'm going to defeat Morgan. I'm also going to need the grace and dignity of a king. You are no more than an ornament to that end. All you need do is stand by my side as my beautiful queen. Yes, Lord Bogart. I'll conduct myself with the dignity of a queen worthy of Sheffield. By the way, did you sleep well last night? I'm very sorry again for how rudely I reacted. Oh, that. I don't have a scratch on me. Don't worry your pretty little head over it. Now then, guards, 
I'm going to see how our soldier's training is coming along at the barracks. Keep an eye on my lady. Make sure she doesn't escape or leave the castle at all for that matter. Yes, Lord Bogard, leave it to us. Cruel as Bogart was, he was also an excellent lord. He spared no effort gathering mercenaries, training soldiers, and reinforcing his ramparts in preparation for the inevitable battle against High Queen Morgan's army. He made sure his army would be strong, because he was sick and tired of losing. Although he was internally driven by his fear of failure at this time, Bogart was still regarded as a good ruler. Acting dignified. Puffing out chest, putting on airs. Realizing there's more to dignity than that. Um, Lady Mash. Y yes, I am the queen. Do you have a problem with that? I know, my lady. So, um, you're Lord Bogart's wife, right? Which means you are now one of the Lords of Sheffield, right? Well, um, with all that in mind, I have a favor to ask you on behalf of your citizens. We've been getting lots of eyewitness reports of Moor spotted in Western Sheffield. And according to the merchants who brought you here, the Moor have no effect on you. The Fang Clan does have more resistance to the Moor's poison than the other clans, but it still hurts like hell. So, if it's not too much to ask, we were hoping we might be able to ask for your assistance. So that's why you brought me all this way. Then I would be glad to handle this. Since I destroyed part of the castle's walls last night, it's only right I do my part to help. Huh? <laughs> damn it, how are you so damn cute? But that's not what's important right now. What do you think you're doing, Mash? And what were you thinking, Guard? When did things get so bad in the Land of the Fae that we have to send our lady out to fight? I'm gonna tell Bogart about this, you know. But it's the duty of a lord and his wife to protect their territory, right? Besides, she's already evil as far as Queen Morgan is concerned, so... Are you calling my bride evil? Do you even see how cute Mash is? She's the happiest bride in the world. She wouldn't even catch a butterfly or pick a flower or... Why are you wearing your old armor? You didn't rip my dress, did you? Oh no, not at all. Don't worry, I'm still wearing your dress underneath my armor. Ah, it's gonna get all wrinkled. Now I'll have to make a new one. But that can wait until after we've taken care of this. I'm not gonna make you fight this battle all on your own. I'm gonna be right there beside you. Eh? You can't do that, Habanyan. If the more touch you, you'll... All you need to handle more is a little ingenuity. It's not my fault fairies these days can't think for themselves. More importantly, my name is Habe Trot. I don't care if other fairies call me Habanyan, but you're not allowed. Eh? Why only me? Because she wants her bride to call her by her first name. Ah. <sighs> yeah. This is why I hate fighting. All that work for almost no reward. That was amazing, Habitrot. I've never seen another fairy move like that. You think? Well, we artisans do need to be able to complete surprise rush orders in a single day. Me, I can make a new bridal dress in the time it takes the sun to set and rise again. That's why they call me Habanyan the Speedster. I, I can't believe what I just saw either. No wonder Lord Bogart holds you in such high regard. Did the Wing Clan make that spool of yours? Uh, but wait, besides Murian, the Wing Clan died out 1200 years ago. Murian? As in Gamester Murian? Huh, I didn't know she was still alive. Or maybe she passed the name on to her daughter. Well, 
Well, whatever. Now that we've taken care of the moor, how are you going to show your appreciation? You're going to treat us to the kind of yummy lunch we deserve? I know we're not allowed to enjoy eating when Bogart's around, but that won't be a problem in the castle town. Of course. I've been wanting to introduce Lady Mesh to everyone anyway. Are you sure that's a good idea? Lord Bogart did say I wasn't supposed to stand out. Ah, it'll be fine. He won't be back until nighttime anyway. It was a big slog coming all this way, right? So it's only right we make the most of it. And the fairies of Sheffield love human culture, so they're not prejudiced against humans at all. Trust me, they're gonna love you down at the pub. They'll be happy, you'll be happy, and I'll be happy. Exactly. Besides, Lord Bogart prohibits us from treating humans like slaves. He says it's only fair since we've all been banished. So we really are equals here. Honestly, I don't know what we would do without our humans. In fact, there's one human woman in particular I'd like to propose to myself. Eh? Is that so? I guess Sheffield really is all about freedom, then. And here I thought he was just talking big about not doing things like Queen Morgan. Um, I'm sorry, but you said you were all banished. Oh, you mean you didn't know? Uh, this place used to be a ghost town up until a hundred years ago. It wasn't until Lord Bogart and the rest of us rebuilt it that Sheffield became what it is today. We used to all live in Norwich, at least until its Lord Spriggan had us all banished. We wandered around for a long time with nowhere to go until we ended up here. Which is why we can't just abandon Norwich now. We might have been banished from it, but it's still our hometown. So if the Queen isn't going to do anything about the Calamity Pool building up there, we will. That's why Lord Bogart is revolting against her. He wants to save Norwich before it's too late. Shortly before nightfall, the time of day known in your world as Twilight, the girl stood alone atop the castle walls looking out over the land of the Fae. At the Isle of Britain, beautiful and lonesome as it stretched out under the endless twilight sky. What are you doing here? Have you forgotten the way back to the castle? Oh, hello, Bogart. The scenery here is so nice, isn't it? You will refer to me as Lord Bogart. I will not tolerate disrespect. And yes, of course the view here is nice. It's so I can see any enemy forces that attempt to invade my territory. Though I suspect you and I are using the term nice very differently. This was a battlefield. In fact, the bloodstains have only recently faded. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Not when I still don't know anything about this town. Does this... Yes, did you say something, Lord Bogart? <sighs> Never mind. Does this scenery truly seem nice to you? Even with all these desolate hills as far as the eye can see, in a world ruled by fairies rather than humans. Yes, it does. It seems wonderfully precious. There's something very forlorn about this scenery, but something endearing, too. I can tell that everyone is suffering here. Rob, Wog, Winky... The people I've met in the other towns, the people of Sheffield, everyone. I don't know what it is that's causing their suffering, but I do know that in spite of it, they all consider this their home. That they want to keep living here, even if it's hard. If so many people still love Britain, I can't imagine it could be such an awful place. How shallow. This is exactly why humans are difficult to deal with. Go back to the castle before you distract the soldiers in their barracks. 
I won't be back until late tonight, so talk to Habitrod if you can't sleep. I will. Thank you for your concern, though, Bogart. Wasn't that nice of him? Lord Bogart really is a wonderful lord, isn't he? Don't let him fool you, Mash. You guys don't demand people call them Lord. You... you think so? I thought that was just to keep his reputation intact. After all, he looked very unhappy when I called him Lord before. Hey? Well, that's even worse. Does that lion head actually think he's some devoted husband or something? You're only married on paper. He's got no right to go around tricking my bride like that. Only on paper, so our marriage is a fraud. D does this mean I'm actually a wicked woman who's deceiving kind and earnest Lord Bogart with my feminine charms? That I'm both a child of prophecy and a femme fatale like no other. <laughs> yeah, maybe you are. No wonder you're too much for Bogart to handle. Especially since he's hopeless against anyone that doesn't detest him. You're practically his natural enemy. Man, Bogart's predecessor must have gotten up to some real bad stuff for him to be in this predicament. Huh? What do you mean that he's hopeless against anyone who doesn't detest him? Oh, that. It's all about fairies' most fundamental desires and unique traits. Humans' emotion changes all the time. One moment they'll want to be loved and the next hated. Or they'll want to protect someone one moment, then hurt them the next. But fairies' desires are much less... mutable. In Bogart's case, he uses his rational mind to keep his violent impulses in check. So he can't make full use of his abilities unless he's both hating and hated by someone. Basically, thanks to who you are, it's impossible for him to be too aggressive. Thanks to who I am... But I still don't know who I am. I don't remember anything about my past. I didn't even know my name until recently. Before I came here... No, before Rob, Wog, and Winky began calling me the Child of Prophecy... I had no idea what I should do, or even what I was supposed to do. No, for that matter. Did I even have a self before I lost my memories? Why do you ask that? <clears throat> There's only one thing I've learned from losing my memories. There's something missing in my heart, like there's a hole right through it. All the fairies I've met have a purpose, something they intrinsically seek. Some of them help others for money, some of them hurt others for money. But I don't have anything like that. Whenever I try to help someone, I always end up realizing the same thing. What is it I want right now? What is it that drove me to help them? I don't know and it makes me feel very empty inside. I have a heart, so I know I can't get away with this forever. I don't think I was even aware of that emptiness before I lost my memories. But now, I... I can't help but notice it. After all, I don't have any memories left to cover it up. Something was missing in me. No, that's not right. There's a gap in me that's long been ready to receive... something. But I refuse to try and fill it. So I find it very hard to believe that... that there's anything I can do. Habetrot blinked in astonishment at the girl's surprise confession. Losing her memories was not all bad. 
it made her aware of a serious problem. Well, hey, most people don't really know who they are or what it is they want. They say that kind of thing becomes clear on your deathbed, but for better or worse, we're still alive. You need something to drive you, a goal you can be proud of. That'll also help you to learn to love yourself. You said you have a hole through you, right? And you're not trying to figure out what you should do as a person. You're trying to figure out what you want to do. Maybe that's not the kind of thing you notice when you're already leaning on others. But this journey is going to be just for you, so you can find it for yourself. Don't listen to her too closely. She's going to bail before this is over. It'll be a long, long time before the girl finds an answer she's comfortable with. For the time being, the fairy's words were just meant as advice to cheer her up. In the hopes that one day they'll form the core of the wheels you're used to spin your own thread. Oh right, I almost forgot a very important part. Do you mind if we rewind just a little bit? I've been waiting for you, my lord. You must be tired after a hard day's work. Hmm. <laughs> Is that your attempt at playing the model wife? Impertinent whelp. Don't think I don't see what you're doing here, you clever lass. Playing along obediently will do nothing to change your fate. My only objective is the throne. Everything I do is in service of defeating the clans and killing Morgan. You are no exception, child of prophecy. I'm quite used to betting humans. I'm going to deflower you now. I will not be gentle. But, if you wish to fight back, you're welcome to try. This is the room in Sheffield's castle's guest house that was prepared for M.A.S.H. On the night that the Child of Prophecy was clothed in a bridal dress and told to await Bogart's arrival. This is what happened during her first night as Bogart's 62nd bride. What was that? Are we under attack? Eh? L -l Lord Bogart! What in the world happened? Oh, the wall by the throne is ruined! Everyone, come quick! The enemy is trying to kill Lord Bogart! Hold it! I'm fine! Do not call the other guards, I just slipped, that's all. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, sir. Still, it's amazing you're alright after falling over 50 meters. I guess that's why they call you the Stone Lion, Lord Bogart. Uh, I'm so sorry, Bogart. I'll be right down. Are you okay? Are you hurt? Again, I'm so sorry. I was actually very nervous about all this. So, even though you just lost your balance from being tired and were only trying to grab my shoulders for support, you surprised me so much I just shoved you with my hands. I never expected you to go flying so far. Trying very hard not to let the sudden realization of what actually happened show on his face. Guard, you are to tell no one else about this. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Of course, sir. I didn't see anything, sir. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must get back to my duties. Oh, the Child of Prophecy is amazing. I can't wait to tell everyone about this. Um, Bogart, would you like for me to rub your back? No, don't touch me ever again. What kind of wife knocks her husband out of a castle on their first night together? The rumors spread overnight. They spoke of an iron woman who could even throw Lord Bogart from his own castle. 
They said she was strong, kind, and eccentric. A new Tam Lin like no one had ever seen before. Man, Sheffield's been a whole new town ever since Lady Mash got here. She gets rid of the moor for us, she helps out with anything we ask of her. And best of all, she even keeps Lord Bogart from acting up. It's like he's back to his old self again. Not even the Queen's army can stop us now. Norwich is as good as back in our hands. A toast to Lady Mash! A toast to Lord Bogart! A toast to our knight, the Knight of Sheffield! Cheers! Must be nice to be you, Wog. Sheesh, the Knight of Sheffield, huh? Mash is the child of prophecy, remember? She's not just Sheffield's knight. Sure, those princess clothes look great on her, but there's something special about her. She's more than that. If you ask me, Mash looked plenty elegant in that iron armor of hers, too. What? You jealous of Bogart now, Rob? Did you forget you were the ones who brought her here? Of course not. I just think it's sick how everyone in town's carrying on about her. I mean, I know it was kind of the same for us, but, but still. Every morning I see Mash looking out at the horizon up from atop the ramparts, and she always looks so lonely. She used to smile all the time. She used to be really happy. It makes me wonder if maybe we made a big mistake. Hmm, is that so? So what? You don't think Mash is the child of prophecy after all now? <laughs> she was just a lucky find at first. Just another piece of merchandise. But then she started talking to us like we were equals, and before I knew it, I got attached to her. Me and Wog aren't from Fairy Britain. We drifted here from outside. We're basically flotsam. Objects, humans, sometimes even fairies wash ashore here sometimes. We're like changelings in a way. Flotsam? I've never heard that term before. But I guess they're pretty typical of Morgan's reign. We're not part of any clan, and we didn't spring up naturally. We don't really belong anywhere. One day, Queen Morgan's soldiers caught us, branded us with command spells, and just let us go. They knew we'd die when we got squeezed for our existence tax at the end of the year, so they didn't even bother killing us. That's why I threw myself into any kind of work I could find, no matter how dirty. You know what Wog is like. He doesn't even know what's going on half the time. Still, I'm like his big brother, so it's my duty to at least make sure he's got enough to eat. My only purpose every year was making sure we survived. At least that kept us from becoming more. But unfortunately, it also made me forget a bunch of things. Hesitation, uncertainty, compassion. The next thing I knew, I was thinking I was a full-blown bad guy, and that I could do whatever I wanted. It would have been a lot easier if I had just stayed like that. But... But being around MASH made me realize I hadn't forgotten my values after all. The Child of Prophecy is supposed to save the fairies of Fairy Britain, right? It's got nothing to do with us since we've never truly been a part of this land. So no, I'm sure she's not the real child of prophecy. The real child of prophecy would never save us. Anise might be a fake child of prophecy, but she's even better than the real one. So does this mean the reason you're still here in Sheffield is... What do you know, dummy? Go on, get lost. What are you even doing here flapping your gums? Don't you have some tailoring to do for the lady or something? I sure do. I'm Habby Trot the Spinner, friend to all brides. Don't worry, I'll make sure Mesh stays safe. And if I ever need help, I'll come to you first. Hmm. 
Ooh, we're not scared of the Moor or the Queen. We're all gonna keep Mash safe together. Ugh. <sighs> you were right, Winky. If we had just parted ways sooner, this would never have... It? Winky? Where'd you go, Winky? Fourth Platoon has returned from Edinburgh, Lord Bogart. They weren't able to meet with Nocnaria, but they were successful with their business negotiations. So they managed to procure the iron weapons, then. Give the weapons to the fairies and take the armor to the humans' barracks. Just having humans around will be enough to empower our fairy soldiers. They don't need to take part in the fighting. All they need to do is stay alive. Yes, sir. I'll have the tailor fit them for armor right away. Now, where is the child of prophecy? Down in the town again. I told- I thought I told her to stay by my throne. No wife of a lord should conduct herself so thoughtlessly. Who told her she could come and go as she pleases? Was it Habitrot? If she thinks she can do whatever she likes just because I value her tailoring skills, she is gravely mistaken. Tell her and the Child of Prophecy that their next infraction will be their last. Well, um, the thing is, sir, Lady Mash said she wanted to be of use to you as best as she could, so... If she wants to be of use to me, she should obey me! I am the law in Sheffield, and any who refuse to abide by it shall be dealt with harshly, regardless of their reasons for doing so. E Hey there, boss. I heard we got some new gear, so I stopped by to make sure it isn't all just junk. Hmm? What's got your fur, ruffled Lord Bogart? Oh, I see. You're all nerves because Mash isn't here, right? Hey, I get it. She's super strong after all. So with the army from New Darlington that's supposedly heading this way... You probably want her here by your side to keep you safe since you're revolting against the Queen and all, huh? Don't be ridiculous. I don't need any protection. That girl would only make more trouble for me if she were nearby. Then it shouldn't matter where Mash goes, should it? I mean, all you care about is having the Child of Prophecy here in Sheffield, right, Bogart? <sighs> you just can't keep your mouth shut, can you? You're lucky there's no other fairy around who can do your job or I'd have twisted your head clean off by now. <sighs> Fine. I will let the Child of Prophecy go wherever she likes during the day. But be warned, Habetrot, there will be consequences if you don't deliver on the promises you've been making. That iron cylinder that was brought here with the girl is similar to Morgan's spear, yes? Have you figured out how it works? Is it something we can use? I still have no idea how it works, but I think I can at least get it to fire. I'm not sure that's how it's meant to be used, though. Plus, just touching it makes me feel sick. Whatever that thing is, I don't think it's even supposed to exist. I can't imagine why Mash had something like that. Whatever it is, it really, really doesn't suit her at all. True. She has yet to even mention it. I suspect she's subconsciously avoiding it. Running from it, even. Huh. That's pretty sharp. At least for you, Lord Bogart. It's nice to hear you voice an honest opinion I agree with for once. Never mind the Child of Prophecy. Can we use that thing as a weapon? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it is a cannon and all. Do you know what a cannon is? No. It's a thing with a chamber that you pack with magical energy ammo, then you can press and burn what's inside the chamber until something comes out. The only thing is, it takes a ton of magical energy to use, enough that most fairies would probably wither and die if they tried. So if you plan on using it, Bogart, you'd better ensure you're the only one. Don't make your subordinates do it. No normal fairy could fire that thing and hope to survive. So what you're saying is, only those who are truly strong can use it, huh? <laughs> That's perfect. It will be an excellent way to demonstrate that I have what it takes to be king. Ugh. Should have known I couldn't get anything through your thick skull. But anyway, I'm getting back to what I was saying before. 
It looks like the Queen's army is finally about to make a move. Are you all ready to face them? What will be your strategy, O Great Lord of Sheffield? Thanks to my supporters in Camelot, I know exactly how strong the Queen's forces are. She is sending her third division, which consists of approximately 2,000 soldiers. She must have thought that would be enough to handle us. Ha! Huh. <laughs> it's almost shocking how little she thinks of us. They'll never be able to get past Sheffield's walls. Our ramparts are made from strips of the world's tree, world tree's bark. They won't be easily destroyed. We have nothing to fear from the Queen's army without a Tam Lin. And with Nocnaria moving south, she can't afford to send more than one division. All we have to do is wait seven days for them to wear themselves out against the ramparts. Once we've held the castle for seven days, the Queen's third division will have spent its strength. Then, my elite soldiers and I need only release our pent-up anger from the siege. So you do have a path to victory in mind. Guess I was worried for nothing then. Then have you told Match this place is going to turn into a battleground in a few days? What am I saying? Of course you have. She's as strong as a Tam Lin, after all. No, I haven't. And I won't. How many times must I tell you there's no need for that? All the Child of Prophecy needs to do is boost my soldiers' morale. Anything else would only get in my way. Make sure you keep your mouth shut, Habetrot. That girl is decoration, no, nothing more. Good evening, Lord Bogart. It's so nice of you to visit me again. Don't misunderstand. I'm only here to save face in front of my guards. Otherwise, no fang fairy with his fur would ever come to the room of a woman he has no intention of betting. Still, now that I'm here, I'm not about to waste my precious time. Hmm. Let us discuss the Child of Prophecy tonight. How much do you know about them now that your memories are gone? Not much, I'm afraid. Only that they're a fairy, they turned 16 this year, and are destined to save Britain. Outrageous. I didn't think it was possible to be so abominably ignorant. The Child of Prophecy's story begins 16 years ago. Einzel, the head of the Mirror Clan who possessed the Sacrament of Prognostication, prophesied that the Savior of Britain had been born and that one day the true king would defeat the false king for good. In response, Queen Morgan tried to have every fairy born that year rounded up and killed, but she wasn't completely successful. There were many villages who harbored anti-queen sentiment. Some of them sheltered newborn fairies in the hope that one would someday fulfill the prophecy. Of course, there were also some towns who took fairies born that year and tried to pass them off as the child of prophecy. These days, some have even offered 16-year-old fairies in tribute to the Queen, claiming they too are the Child of Prophecy. That alone makes the Child of Prophecy valuable. It's why every faction in Britain was desperate to find them. For not one fairy ever doubted that Einzel's prophecy would come true. You see, they knew this had happened before. There have been other times in Britain's history where a savior has been born to rescue it. A figure meant to banish the great calamity that comes every thousand years. The one who channels the voice from paradise. Oh, it's laggy. Sorry, we had a little lag that I fixed, so let's continue from where we left off. <clears throat> At any rate, all but two of the records from the Fey Era have been lost. One describes an incident that took place in Fey Era 4000, over 6,000 years ago. There, a single fairy rescued Britain when constant interclan warfare had brought it to the brink of collapse, at the cost of their own life. The second is the War of Summer in the Fey Era 2000, in which war was waged against the northern fairies who came here from the Isle of Shadows. 
In that war, Queen Mab's army, uh, Queen Mab's army of human soldiers wielding iron weapons nearly succeeded in eradicating our ancestors. But then, a single fairy stepped in to mediate between the two camps, which led to the creation of the six clans we have today. The savior's name was Ash, meaning Ash Tree. After ending the clan wars, she was buried in the remains of Orkney, at the northernmost end of Britain. <laughs> the ignorant low-class fairies may believe that the child of prophecy is supposed to be this savior reborn, but not me. No matter how many times she may have saved Britain before, she's still lost. The calamity still exists. That alone is proof she does not deserve to be called anyone's savior. Now if any of the previous saviors had succeeded at ridding the world of those accursed moor and the calamities that occur with ever more frequency, then I would have accepted their claims. I've noticed that everyone in town seems to be afraid of the word calamity. No, not just them. Every fairy in every town I visited on the way here was afraid of it. My understanding is that, as terrifying as Queen Morgan may be, Fairies still obeyed her because she at least kept them safe from the calamities. But now... That's right. Morgan has declared her intention to leave Norwich to its fate. This was her second grave error after appointing Tristan to Tam Lin. I may never get such an opportunity again. Ed, you're happy about this, Lord Bogart. You cannot rally soldiers without a cause that they believe in. They need something greater than themselves. This Norwich situation is an unprecedented opportunity, Mash. It is the chance I have been waiting for to seize the throne. I have no intention of actually saving Norwich, but I will still use the situation. My call to action couldn't be simpler. I've demanded that the Queen rid Norwich of its Calamity Pool and aid in the restoration of the city. If these demands are not met, then Sheffield will no longer recognize Camelot's rule. The Queen will either need to comply with my demands, or send out her army to suppress us. Frankly, I don't care which option she chooses. Either will deplete her army. That will give me time to collude with the Northern Fairies, invite the Round Table army in the South to join our cause, and eventually create an army of my own to rival the Queen's. You are no more than grease for those wheels, child of prophecy. I need neither nor expect you to save Britain. Until and unless you recover your memories, you are not to make a move without my permission. All I want is for you to continue giving the people of this town hope. You're no good for anything else. That's the whole situation in Sheffield. Bogart has 3,000 soldiers, 2,000 in his fairy militia, and 300 humans. He's also gathering more forces even as we speak, so you'll probably want to make your move soon. So it would seem. Damn it. The Queen only authorized Sheffield to assemble soldiers as a deterrent against the Northern Fairies. Now you're telling me there are 5,000 armed rebels all in one place there? That makes this the largest rebellion we've ever seen. I'd say it's owed largely to Lady Tristan crossing a line with her antics. Ever since New Darlington was built, countless fairies have been slaughtered for pure amusement. Now fairies from all across Britain are harboring doubts about Lady Tristan. And about High Queen Morgan for making her a Tamlin in the first place. You don't have to tell me, I'm painfully aware of that. But we have still sworn loyalty to the High Queen. We cannot be party to any of that nonsense. Right, sorry about that, it just slipped out. So, what about my payment? Very well, go on, pay him. He may have lost his standing, but Bogart is still a powerful leader from the Fang Clan. He can easily defeat a thousand fairies on his own. Send word to Camelot to have Lady Gawain dispatched here on the double. What about the Child of Prophecy? I'm pretty sure intel that valuable's worth something. Ha! That's a good one. They just captured another child of prophecy yesterday. 
This new one isn't even worth looking into. I'm sure Bogart just made her up. Oh, I wouldn't be too quick to dismiss it, officer. That fairy there was telling the truth. I especially enjoyed the description of this child of prophecy. How did it go again? Black iron armor, a huge shield, appears to be a girl of about 16, and a black iron cylinder that made you uneasy just to look at. Oh, you've definitely got my attention now, brother. Please, tell me more. What's this girl's name? You do know her name, right? Honestly, I found it strange how you avoided mentioning just that part even though you're here to sell us intel. I mean, don't you think it's suspicious? It almost makes me think you're not telling us on purpose. If that's how it sounded to you, sorry, but you're wrong. I didn't say it because I don't know it. Now, if you're not going to pay me anymore, I'll just be on my way. I want to get headed back to the south by tomorrow. Hey now, why the rush? You came all this way after all. Come on, chat a spell with us. Don't worry, Winky. I'm sure it'll all come back to you soon enough. It's written all over your face.